This is Twit. Now, we all know that AR has been around for a while, right? It's been around for a while, just like VR has been around. And we've, we've kind of seen a slow adoption of the technology in the market. We've seen some gimmicks things, some games. We've seen the Microsoft HoloLens. We've seen them kind of demo that and show some scenarios where they can do trainings and other things. But we haven't really seen all different facets of the market take it on. Now, it's kind of one of those technologies that has amazing potential for the different sectors of the market, but it hasn't really been applied yet. Well, there's actually an interesting application here. Now, there's a company called Veolia Water Technologies. Now, it's a transactional water treatment specialist firm. Now, this sounds exciting here, but it is a partner where they actually been partnered with a company called Fieldbit to actually bring AR, augmented reality, to the plant full floor. Now, this night might not be in your wheelhouse, but the AR has really made a difference in this organization. So let's get into what it actually does. First thing is users can now experience AR marked up they actually can experience the views of AR markup uh, of their equipment and it actually can have spaces through smart glasses such as Wheelware's HMT1 or by using an Android smartphone app to mark up video from the phone's camera in real time. If, you, if you've used Pokemon Go, it's similar to that. Now, Philbit's application sounds much better than Haynes Manual, though. Once a, once, procedure, once a procedure has been worked up and added to the knowledge base, field workers can actually access it by first selecting the pump or the machine model that they need and then selecting the procedure which they could be replacing a filter or replacing the assembly or in general repair item. Now, in the future, field techs will be able to actually just aim their phone at a gla or glass directly at the machine and have a relevant uh, KB article or procedure pop up automatically that the company can actually help them repair or do work on it. They can even have AI image recognition for different aspects of that. Now, once the worker selects a repair or maintenance procedure, the Fitbit app, the Fieldbit app actually walks them through the step-by-step -step procedure. And at each step of the procedure, it actually highlights different parts, uh, bolts which they can loosen, or they circle things that are red they shouldn't touch uh, on the video uh, and on the headset in real time. Now, this is interesting because this allows their company to, to not only train people on the job, but bring the information to their fingertips. Curtis, I want, I want to throw this to you first because, well, actually, I want to throw it to you only because there's only two of us. Uh, but I want to throw this to you because you actually had a prediction, right? A, tw a 2019 prediction that AR is going to finally go mainstream, right? Yeah, and and that wasn't, uh, from my perspective, something where I was going way out on a limb because I've talked to manufacturers and users of uh, augmented reality in a number of different situations, and it just has a great deal of potential for business operations. Uh, you know, I've talked to people who are, use it in areas like maintenance uh, I a couple of years ago spoke with uh, the customers of Epson, uh, which is uh, not just a printer company, but they actually have a, a, a substantial uh, augmented reality uh, glasses business. Um, they're using them for fighter jet maintenance uh, in the field where a mechanic can wear these, go up, be looking at a jet engine uh, deployed anywhere around the world, see the the item, and if uh, it requires replacement, while they're still there on the um, airframe, they can tap it, pull it from inventory, or find out where it is in the system, and and things like that uh, applied not only to to the very high dollar maintenance like uh, fighter aircraft, but things like uh, HVAC. Um, things like uh, process control in uh, oil refineries. Uh, these are all areas where the, the augmented reality makes a substantial difference in how productive the, um, the, the, the people can be as they're doing maintenance, how safe they can be, um, and then how productive that very expensive equipment can stay because it is maintained and repaired much more quickly. So, so I think things like that are driving it. And as the higher volumes of equipment help the price come down, I suspect we're going to see augmented reality in more and more situations um, 
not only in what we'll call blue collar and technical work, um, but but I suspect it's going to be moving into more managerial and white collar tasks as well. Yeah, that makes sense. I think the interesting thing here, another trend that we're maybe seeing here as well is some of the platforms like Android and iOS. Now, Android actually is starting to trend more and focus more on their mobile AR, uh, their AR kit and AR core, because uh, they actually saw quite a bit of increase uh, in 2018 and 2017 in this area. And so they're focusing more on actually producing more and more functionality within this kit. So that's actually interesting because that means they're actually seeing some market shift and some more focus on that area. Uh, another thing that I actually saw that was really interesting here is the fact that um, there's lots of different ways that it, this is, the retail is starting to take this on. Uh, in fact, I actually was just I was on my phone just recently looking to buy a new uh, television, um, and of course, the Amazon app on both Android and iOS allow you to, you know, place the you know take your phone out. Play, shoot it towards the wall and actually see uh, the TV on the wall. So make sure that it fits um, uh, and, and how it's going to look up there, which is interesting. That's for consumers. But also if you flip the flip the bit and look at uh, organizations as well, like Home Depot or House or, or, you know, Wayfair or any of these companies out there that are trying to sell home furnishings or they're trying to sell equipment of some type, um, it allows uh, retail, allows consumers and businesses to review this equipment in the space that they're going to go. Um, so you might find the dimensions and so on online, but being able to really experience it within the space is something that retailers haven't been able to do until date. And AR is really helping that. So that's something pretty interesting that can actually help as well. Now, um, navigation is another one. Uh, we've seen, um, I've seen areas where um, different applications can allow you, can kind of take you through, like let's say um, a mall or even a business um, or a data center uh, and allow you to actually walk through the data center and it will tell you, okay, these racks over here are for this trunk and th these racks over here for the firewall and so on and so forth. So somebody who uh, is new, who hasn't been there before, somebody who's going to repair um, a device that's in a rack somewhere, somewhere deep in the data center, these applications can actually help them navigate internally through a map system to actually find their location. So I think this is going to have a large, large effect on the market um, and it'll continue to do so. Curtis, uh, you know, you talked a little bit about uh, manuals and so on. Now we've, we've seen in the past, um, you know, kind of the uh, Chilton Hayes automotive repair models manuals where they you kind of open them up and you, you, they show you kind of the blown out view of of a car or or a machine of some type and then you kind of got to go go in and start finding these things and maybe fixing something finding the right part repairing the part is this something that will you know as we've seen with this other field bit application is this something that will those will be a thing of the past if you could just pull out your phone and uh, pull up uh, a car uh, manual and or a, a machine manual and just kind of start fixing things? Is this going to make that kind of market obsolete? Well, I'm not sure that it makes it obsolete, but I do think it changes the market. I, I, you mentioned Chilton, and uh, I have a bookshelf full of Chilton manuals for current and previous vehicles. Uh, but I, I have no trouble imagining the Chilton app that, as you say, puts the um, the augmented reality um, display up there as you're in the engine compartment or as you're uh, looking at uh, doing a brake job or whatever it might be. I think that would be superb uh, and, and a tremendous use. You know, I, I think there are also some, some things that are happening in the, the office environment um, especially as quantitative analysis of, of various trends becomes bigger and bigger and the data sets get more and more complex. I, I thought it was interesting the very first time I was able to, to do uh, an Oculus Rift session uh, wasn't at any sort of gaming thing. It was at SAP Sapphire Now conference. Um, and I put on the Oculus Rift and walked through a, a massive uh, multi-dimensional data set and was able to pull things out. I believe we're going to see more of that as meetings take place 
uh, that involve more complex data. You know, we've talked about big data so much, um, but being able to actually visualize what's going on, being able to understand what that very rich data means is made simpler when something other than just the tabular representation of a spreadsheet is involved. Uh, so I think we're going to see a lot more of that. Uh, I was reminded of that actually this week. One of my favorite authors, uh, a man named um, Edward Tufte, uh, has written a, a seminal book called The Visual Display of Quantitative Information, which I recommend to just about everyone. And um, being able to put that into multi-dimensions, being able to bring it out from the printed page to an augmented reality uh, meeting of professionals, I think is going to make a huge difference in how well we're able to make use of all of this analysis that modern uh, systems are able to give us. It's interesting. There's, there's, I think there's actually some additional, more on the communication side, telecommunication side as well, some additional applications here. If we think about it, um, a lot of these companies which allow for remote collaboration like Zoom and Skype, Teams, Slack, those kind of companies, they allow you to, organizations to actually collaborate remotely. But the interesting thing here is there's also the remote assistance side, is the walkthrough side, allowing organizations to actually allow to, to have you walk you through something. Let's say it's constructing a device or it's putting together something or it's, you know, writing some code uh, or doing something. Um, and this this kind of experience can almost provide a holographic style experience so that the person on the remote side can actually walk you through something uh, on their side by providing this kind of AR experience. So I definitely think there's, there's going to be a trend of additional applications here. This is just the start of it as we see in the manufacturing side. But I'm sure more and more we'll start to see applications come to market and we'll, we'll actually be surprised by them.